let us pray. Blessed Lord, we thank you and we bless you for another time in your presence, O God. We are here again, Father Lord, to share the scriptures, to learn at your feet, to learn your ways, to know your thoughts. Father, to listen to your heartbeat. Spirit of the living God, we invite you to preside that the words of our mouth will be acceptable in your sight, O God. Let iron sharpen iron to the praise and glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Good evening. I don't know what happened to Abigail. She ran away. Let me start with Amara. Is Amara here? But well, she must be. She's on holiday anyway. Amara, good, good evening. Good evening. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. And you? Uh, fine, thank God. So, Amara, why do people... Why does a man insult another man? Usually when they've been insulted, he's been insulted himself, really. Yeah. But he feels insulted. I want to know, why do we insult one another? They're saying we insult one another because we're insulted. There are sometimes when people insult you without being insulted. What are some of the reasons? Anger. Unforgiveness. What did you say? Anger, unforgiveness. Okay, people people insult somebody when they are angry. I, I, I have never met people that insult others as much as you, us. They are the most insultive people I have ever met. I mean, they insult people for no reason whatsoever. Just meet somebody and you insult him, especially especially if you if you better people. If <laughs> if you feel him <laughs> if you feel the person doesn't even understand your language or you know. um I, I was a student in the US and I went for a party or something, and one, you know, one chap was talking another. I look at this one; he looks like a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never met the guy before. I wasn't even talking to him. He was just, you know. So I said, "Oh, body, a lily." So, so the 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 friend was not telling him that. He can speak Yoruba. He can speak my <laughs> 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 He just guessed that, you know. How do you know this guy can't speak Yoruba? I could understand him. I don't understand why he just decided to. I didn't say anything to him. You know. We went. We went to Cactus once, and Nzan walked up to the counter to order some juice. So he said to the guy, he said, um, please, can I have this and this and that? And the guy turned to the other guy in Epic and said, look at his mouth. As if, <laughs> as if, as, what does he, how does he know what this, this, that, and that is? Then he responded to him and said, I understand what, exactly what it is that you are saying. Oh, no. I just, I think people insult others because they want to feel like they're better than that person. It's very condescending. So you feel like somehow you've elevated yourself by stepping on someone. 
Okay, yeah, you see, have you have you ever known somebody who irritates you or just wastes your time? Oh. <laughs> With two components, <laughs> two components, two components of the question. Somebody who irritates you or somebody who just wastes your time. I don't, I don't, I, now, no, I don't, not now, because I avoid people. So if, if, if I know you're going to waste my time, I will avoid running, people. <laughs> I, will, I will run away ahead. Also, I'm very careful about what I call, what I term the spirit of hatred. I think that that spirit exists where you just don't like certain people. Or you are irritated by them, and I don't. I try not to entertain that thing at all mm -hmm. because I, I used to be like that. Hmm? So when you were like that, what do you do when somebody irritates you? I just actually I avoid people when they, um, you know, when I have. Okay, you. I can tell you that when people are very loud. Um, I just get very anxious around them. It's not even irritation because loud noises make me anxious. So I just go somewhere. So what do you do? Somebody comes to see you and the person refuses to leave. Well, you see, I'm sorry. I'm not good at that because I'm, I won't let them in. <laughs> but you know, there's somebody that you know. The person is already in your house. How did <laughs> so, they get in? Your, how did they get to my you, house? You, you, <laughs> come on, somebody, somebody would come to visit you. You would say, "Please go away." I won't say go away, but I'm not. I won't get the door. You understand? I won't. I you won't open the door. I had people that did that in color, but they would just come and they would just come, and after a while, I just. I, I would just lie or I wouldn't be there but I would I would say I wasn't at home <laughs> because they, then they would sit for the next three four five six hours and I was working from home so it was yeah. it, and, I, and this was something I was praying actually I was actively praying about so I don't have any righteous answers today I'm sorry sorry you don't um, have to try to be, to be righteous <laughs> I mean okay. you know so so, so I mean I, I have a kind of a, an open office so people, anybody can come to see me. But somebody comes to see you and they're just talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. And, um, and you know, before they came, you were trying to get something, so whatever, done. But what do you do? You tell them, uh, please excuse me, can you, can you sort of, can you sort of go? <laughs> 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 I, I can't do that though because I'm a coward. Honestly, I can't do and I wouldn't do that. Rather, um, and these countries, you know, the British they do it, so they will see you coming and they will go in the opposite direction. So so I would do that, or I wouldn't get the door, or I wouldn't answer the phone, or but I <clears throat> I won't I don't have I, I can't say to somebody, please go. Um I don't I have something to do. I will just then start to feel bad. Then I won't be able to do anything for the rest of the day because I'll just be feeling bad for the rest of the day. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's not easy. Happy girl. Yes, Dr. Femi. Have you ever endured suffering with patience? <laughs> Two components. Not just, have you ever endured suffering? That's not the question. But the suffering mm. that you endured with patience. Uh, uh, yes, I, I have endured su suffering. But did you endure wow. it with patience? No, more with annoyance. 
<laughs> what happened? <laughs> Hmm. Okay, so um, the, uh, where I used to live, there was this lady who used to come and um, w wash clothes for my neighbor. And whenever she would come around, you know, she, on the other side of the fence, there were these her townspeople, they were her townspeople and whenever they got, they were dog eaters, by the way, they liked eating dogs. <laughs> so- How do you, how do you people, know? How do you know they like eating dogs? Oh, we used how to you, see them, watch them from upstairs, slaughter the you dogs. You saw them then, killing dogs? Well, I didn't see them killing it, but-, but So the, how do you know what they are eating dogs. while what they were eating dogs? We would, we would see the dog's body. We would see the dog's body after they had roasted it and all that. And roasted it. <laughs> Were they Calabar people? Yes, yes, yes. And then, so you, these people would shout, they would shout, they would fight, they would quarrel, and everything. And you know, sometimes I felt like just going to them and just telling you, yeah, Lena, then just shut up already. You're disturbing everybody, and no, he has the liver to talk to you. Stop it! But uh, just like uh, Sayemisi said, he says, Sayemisi said, I'm a bit of a coward. I wouldn't do that. You know, I, I couldn't do that. So I was annoyed, but I endured the suffering. And it continued until we left that place. Well, we were there for like three years. Okay, what I want us to discuss today is, is patience. It's something that God has been trying to teach me. I think I was saying that on, on Sunday. Samukwa. Good evening, doctor. Good evening, church. Good evening, Sam. What is patience? How would you define it? the ability to um, the ability to quietly endure unpleasant circumstances including waiting for the things that you're looking forward to in you know, right off the off my head, off the top of my head. That's what I would say. Okay, you know, all right. But you know, you can endure an unpleasant circumstance, but you might not endure it with patience. So I think you know your definition. Uh, notice does that not, I said does not, does quite... not get the cocoa of the patience. Uh, I said. To quietly endure, with quietly endure without complaint. How do you how do you define the quiet? Do you understand my question? Uh, yes, I do. The, when I say quietly endure, I I, I just uh, cluster. Classified it now by adding without complaint. <laughs> okay, well, you know, but, but uh, all right. Um, the, 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 the quietly, there are two types of quietly. One is verbal quietly, and the other one is internal quietly. You know, I might not yes, complain good. about the situation aloud, <clears throat> but I might be complaining inside. But that will now be patience. Patience it requires be, yes. that patience will require the, the, the quietness to be on both sides, outside and inside. So I, if I actually believe, to... and you know, I stand to be corrected, I might be wrong. I actually believe that if if it is on the inside, 
he won't he won't come out. <laughs> if, if the quietness, of, yes, if the quietness is on the inside, there will be nothing that will come out. So if it's on the inside, it will be on, it will also be on the outside. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. <laughs> yes, I, I I stand to be corrected. I'm, I'm, I'm that is I'm just hazarding a guess that if 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 you are quiet on the inside, then um, the outside will be taken care of. I think you are right. Okay, but um, so patience is enduring an uncomfortable situation. Or an inconvenient situation without complaints. Am I did I do justice to you? Yeah, fairly okay. so. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Deliki. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. How can we develop patience? Ah. Yes, uh, well, it's, it's very interesting. It's a very, very important question. I'll put it that way. The, I think the only way we can develop patience is only by praying to God. Because, <laughs> because, because, uh, because if I, when I look at myself, I'm not somebody that is patient at all. Because when I look back and I look back in certain situations that I have been, certain in, uh, uh, certain condition that is not palatable, that is not convenient, that is, uh, I'm not patient. I, in fact, the time I know is that it was God that I believe that used his power to press me down to be able to be patient. If I make it to a level that yeah, I don't have any choice. Because at the time, it kept me for two good years at home without without no job, without nothing. And it was very difficult time. At that time, what I just do, I wake up, I just pray, I read the Bible, I'm just there. I can't go out. I don't let me, you know, let, I let, was... me say, let me say something, Dr. Because you know, I think you slightly dodged the question. And then I said, okay. you know, how do we develop patience? You say by praying. I mean we can you can say that about anything. Okay. So let me let me let me pose the question in a way that you can't dodge it. How does God teach us patience? Hmm. I think uh, when he gives us his word, for 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 example, he gives us his word that okay, maybe we, we maybe we've been praying for something and he said he will give us that thing, you know, and we are and we are waiting, you know. He gives us again, maybe you somebody else will still tell us again, which is the assurance of the word that he gave us. In that process, that thing will compel us to believe in the word and be waiting. Maybe in that waiting, maybe we can be patient. I don't know if I'm right. Though. I'm just trying. No, to... no, no. I think I, 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 I think <laughs> the theory that you are putting forward it does not exist. <laughs> it doesn't work. God can make us a promise, and we are not patient. <laughs> uh, as in him, we are, you know, the, the fact that he's made us a promise doesn't mean that automatically the making of the promise comes with the antidote or the medicine of patience that he now puts into it. Okay, so there are some, there are some people that are that have their hands up. Okay, yes, let me see. I think the way that God teaches us patience is by making us wait <laughs> and frustrating us. So um you 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 preached a sermon yesterday that I had heard when I was very young. <laughs> so maybe I heard that sermon when I was in my twenties. And in my twenties I was just like, what what, I what about it? What in what aspect of the sermon? About you know where you um realize that you don't actually need anybody but God, and okay. marriage right. is not marriage is not 
the answer to your problems. When you're in your 20s and you hear, hear that kind of sermon, as most of people in your congregation were, they were probably going to be thinking, oh God, what's this guy going on about? This is not why we came here. What kind of sermon is this, right? By the time you are 50, like me, you agree with everything. <laughs> you so we're, fast forward 25 years and everything in that someone you say yes to. And even I was surprised by it. So I understood what it meant because I always wondered what, you know, that passage where it says that in the time that Joseph was in prison, he said the, the word of God tested him. So I always asked myself, what does, what does that mean? And it's like you you bring out these uh, electrical machines when these electricians come and you'll be putting you'll be hearing wah, 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 different. <laughs> so you 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 get to that age where you will feel the thing the tester in you, and you are not shocked anymore. Then you realize that the word of God, all of those years was testing you, and they, it has done its work in you. So. The, yeah, but then, but, then, but then a lot of the time we are not patient still, even though it, it, it you know, I mean, even though it might, it might, it might test us for five years, ten years, we might still go through it impatiently. Yeah, but you will get when the patience, because the word says, let it do its work in you. So the patience <laughs> I mean, is perfect. Is, 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 is the, so you will get to that point where. And you will know, like you, you say, you will tire. If somebody is beating you, beating you, beating you, when you know how you are dead because you will not get up again, like in the movies. So when patience has done its work in you, the when they when they put that tester, the, there will be no light. Your battery will be completely dead. You'll be okay. <laughs> 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 then you then you will know. <laughs> okay, and, so 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 okay. let, let me let me let's give you another example. Let, let, Sorry. Okay, go on. When I was before I had kids, you know, I'd be sitting in the airport and this there'll be a child and the child would be screaming and I would be irritated. By the time I had and, and Amara was the first shock, was the first <laughs> you know, because I remember when I had the, Amara as a baby and I would feed her, then she would move and all the milk would come up and then she would start to scream. And I would be looking around and I'll be like, oh, I'll be, you know, almost trying to apologize to people. And after that happened to me, if you put me in any airport now and there's a child screaming, I'm unmoved or I'm offering to help or, but you're not going to find me irritated. It will never happen. So there's all kinds of, I think that the, the affliction, the problems, the, the waiting, the, the, all of those things. And which is why little children are very impatient and elderly people are usually very patient. They've been beaten into their patience by life. <laughs> <laughs> They've been beaten to surrender. <laughs> yes, I, 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 you, have, you, have, you have actually said what I wanted to do. You know, in fact, you know, it teaches us patience by just giving us a hard time. <laughs> And you know, we cry to him, he doesn't answer, we give, you know. I mean even even a baby, you know, if a baby cries and cries and cries and nobody answers, after a time he looks around and says, These people are not <laughs> these people are not answering me. I might give up. Yes, Sam. Okay. Um I I want to share an experience. Now I remember when I was still, uh, when I still kept a car and I was driving, I found that I was usually highly infuriated by the habits, the driving habits of, of other... Of Lagos drivers. Yes, of Lagos drivers, especially commercial vehicles of any sort or size. And then a number of private users. And... And it was clear that many of them did not even know, not to talk or feel, that they were doing anything wrong. And I realized that these are people who had never heard of a highway code before. And these are people who most likely never ever took a driving test before getting a driver's license. <laughs> you know, you know it, most people just, you know, go to the right Nigeria, they use the face of money and get it. Pay somebody and they, they bring it to them at home. No, so 
this kind of um, uh, driving habits used to infuriate me. Uh, because, and particularly when I remember that before I got a driving license, your long, long, long ago, when I was still a teenager, I had to go to City Hall to go and write exam, paper exam, and then do driving tests. Before this, they had my time to give me a license. Now, you, you know, but I found that I was usually so, so upset with drivers. And many times in my frustration and impatience, I would find myself, you know, either honking on the horn a lot or, you know, shouting at people through the window. Until, and it was, it was so bad that even my, uh, my, my family people used to, used to complain that, ah, uh ah, -uh, your own is too much self. <laughs> so one day, so so one day I thought to myself, but true, true, this is this is this is getting out of hand. And then I decided that I was going to go and ask God to help me solve this problem. I decided that in my mind that I was going to do a three-day fast and ask God to help me take away this this uh, fury and impatience. After the first day, at the end of the first day, God told me, it's okay, it's enough. Don't worry, I've done it. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm telling you, and much to my surprise, and the the utter amazement of my family. After that, we entered the car and we drive around, and they don't hear me say a word when people do all what. So they'll just turn and be looking at me very strangely. You know, maybe... After we have passed the, the uh, event, then I will now make reference to it. But I wouldn't say anything. They watched this go on for quite a while. And then they started commenting that, ah, which magic has happened? You know, and I didn't say anything. But then this brings me to a question that I have, which is when God grants you your heart's desire, when you have asked for it, because the scripture tells us that if we ask him, he will give, especially if we ask in his name, meaning ask the kind of things that he would be. Yes, Sam. Sam, Sam. This is why your, your testimony is a fantastic testimony. Really. I mean, yeah, listen to it, it's a fantastic testimony. Um, Because, yes, God always answers. But... Um, a lot of the time, he answers in ten years. <laughs> oh yeah, sometimes. But this one you was not. But in this, but in this, your case, that's what is fantastic about the case that you have given the example you have given us was that you fasted for one day, and he told you, "Fine," and that was it. Uh, that has exactly. never happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that 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 was what happened, and I noticed. But now, like I said, he brought me to a question. Because when God grants you a desire that you have requested for, what is the part we have to play to keep it? Because only me, myself, I now realize that after some time, I noticed that I started, I gradually started gravitating back towards that, that former yeah. behavior of getting irritated by these people. You know? Yes. And I would now be trying to keep myself in check. So I began to wonder, so, and I, I haven't stopped wondering since that time. This has been quite a long time ago. I've been okay, that, so that one I can answer for you. Supposed to play? I can answer, <laughs> I can answer that one by the grace of God. Okay. You know, the one that you, your, your testimony itself is strange to me. It hasn't it never happened to me. Okay. <laughs> but you see, <laughs> there is this. Huh? If you are an alcoholic, and you go to God and you say, God, you have to help me take this alcohol away. To, you know, so I'm going to give a hypothetical example. So God wants to help you. Okay, He will suddenly make you hate alcohol. You understand? You just discover that you don't like it anymore. <clears throat> you take it, you vomit. You take, you know, but you see. As time goes on, uh, this thing starts to recede. 
especially if you are not going back to the giver. So, you know, in, when he when he gave you the patience that you got, okay, what he then requires is this. Every time some strange things happens to you on the road, go back to him. And you are not reacting. Don't just take it like that. You say, Father, I need to thank you because, you know, I mean, you remember those days I used to, it was you that, you know, I mean, you always acknowledge him all the time. Otherwise, I believe, I think I believe you. I believe he, he that. Will, he, he will leave you, he will, he will leave you to say, okay, so, so you have graduated, Abby. Okay. Uh, Sam, you're on your own now. I, th <laughs> I think I believe that. I think I believe that. But then again, I remember that after after a while, when this thing started coming again, I started thinking, I said, ah, God, I asked you to help me with this thing. And you did. But how is it that the thing now started coming again? And you know what I'm thinking now? What I'm thinking now is that perhaps he solved that problem by making me just fed up of driving in Lagos. So the moment I had the opportunity to just dispose of my cars, I did it, it didn't cross my mind to even buy another one. And Christine has talked and talked and talked, and I'm just not interested. <laughs> I had never, I've just not been interested in getting another car. I would rather just go through public transport, whatever the situation. And and I and I and I have no regrets about it. So I don't know whether that is that is part of his strategy of helping me to solve that problem, for, you know, once and for all. But you know, yeah, I, some of these things, one is not. One can't really be very sure. No, know, I don't think that's because... I don't think that's part of his strategy. Because really, yeah. if, 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 if you are a kleptomaniac and God helps you to stop it, he will not take you away from the money that you can steal. <laughs> you know. Oh. Um so he will put you in the in it and you will not steal it. So being away from yes, it, but the fact is that the, the only the only principle that, that applies to scripturally. Is fornication is the only thing flee fornication okay run away from it but you know i mean if if we it doesn't mean that you have to run you know then you have not you have you have, have not been healed if you have to now run away from driving you know that no, well not... i see that but I'm, I'm no but i find i find something at play now if uh because if in a number of times, my my mode of uh, um, movement now is to just pick up my phone and order a ride to go to where I want to go. And while I'm sitting in the vehicle with whoever is driving, I'm still seeing all this kind of rubbish driving in Lagos. And and I know that it still it still gets on my nerves. But I discover that, in as much as it does still get on my nerves. I don't react anymore the way I used to when I used to drive. I don't see them. And, you know, I'm, I, I was just wow. <laughs> Look at what that guy did. But I don't react the way I used to. But I still see the same thing as I'm, as I'm going. I, I don't know whether it is because uh, I'm not the one driving. But the fact is that the effect is the same as, as it used to be. Uh, uh, um, the, 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 how do I put it now? When when I see what the, the the effect on me is the same, but the reaction is not. But 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 the, but the patience might also come from you needed to be at the place at a certain time, and you caught up in traffic. Okay, and the more you are seeing it, um, the less likely it is that you will be, be there on time. And um, one must still know that God is with me, and is a key part of time. So he know he knew him before I started the journey that I'm going to hit this traffic jam. So you know, I mean, I I I, I use I've, I've had that on so many occasions, um, traveling. You know, I would hit the traffic jam in Victoria Island and it might take me like one hour to get out of VI. Okay? While in that one hour, 
I know that I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss the plane. But you know, and it's just a device of God. When you come out of Victoria Island, no traffic again. You just zoom. You are in the airport. Okay. <laughs> so after some time, you realize that he is the one orchestrating everything. Just leave it to him. Just tell him, please. Let me get there. <laughs> let me get there on time. Uh, and he will arrange it. I, yeah. I, I phoned, I, I phoned uh, um, Abigail, you know, as you know, uh, because I knew that it, it takes a long time to get to her place. Well, you know, but she said there was no traffic. Got there within an hour. Yes, let me see. I wanted to um, qualify something you said because I don't. I, I'm not sure that everyone has a problem with fornication, um, so that they would have to flee. But you might, for example, have a problem with, you know, food like tiramisu and chocolate biscuits, and then you would have to, I mean, as opposed to things like fornication. Anyway. You will have to flee the chocolate. Is that what you are saying? <laughs> <laughs> the Bible will not tell you to flee the chocolate. Huh? It will. It will. It will put you in a situation where the chocolate is right here, and you still won't eat it. That is I when you know, know that you have been healed. That's, that's, that's when, that's when yeah. you know you have been healed. We are running away from chocolate now. We don't <laughs> run away from, <laughs> from chocolate. <laughs> Okay, well, I I don't know. Okay, well, that is just my own interpretation of it because it's only it's only fornication that the scriptures tell us to flee. Because we are in control of everything else. I mean, it doesn't tell us to run away from the devil. No, it doesn't tell us to run away from you know. And he will put us in situations that are difficult. So God, you know, God does not does not. Heal us of impatience, okay, and then he will he will now now put us in situations that require patience. No, he will now put us in those situations. That's how we know that he, we, we are now patient. He will put us in those uncomfortable situations, in those situations that take a long time, and you then have to apply the patience that you have received. So he's not going to say, because you are now patient, you will not see those situations. No. He's giving you a tool to deal with some situations. So in fact, if God has given us patience, he's going to put us in impatient situations. Because that is how he will be glorified. He will get the glory when we as his children are in that situation. But we are long suffering. We are exercising self control. So, Mr. Benedict Aligbe, good day, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, George. Yes. What What is the uh, What is the What is the relationship between being patient? And complaining. Can we complain and still be patient? No. Patient complain. Patient, someone that is patient does not complain. Does not complain because your patient comes from the knowledge that the person that you that give you the gift of patient or that you are expecting from where you are trying somebody. Trust in God for something, and that is a promise. And you believe that you do it. If that patient will be derived from know that this person, this, this God, will surely do it. But when you are complaining, you deny the, the patient. You're no more patient. That, that's no more patient. Because is that complaining that will test your patient? I don't know what to call patient. Is that a complaining that will test it? If anything comes and you complain about that same thing. I mean, there's no more, there's no more, there's no patient anymore again. Let me, uh, let me, let me, let me apologize to you to disagree with you. I don't agree with you at all. So uh, let me, let me explain 
in this agreement so that yeah, maybe we can get a meeting of minds. If you are patient, you mustn't complain to man. Hmm? A patient man can complain to God. Okay? If you complain to God, no problem. As long as it is God that you are complaining to, it does not affect your patience. But if you complain to man, you are becoming patient. What do you think of that? I don't think you um, made the distinction. I'm coming. I'm coming. Your point. In the first instance, you don't ask man to do anything for you. I don't think complain for man can will come inside this this equation. Yeah, but we complain to men okay. all the time. There's something uh, that better, happened to better, me. Better, better me, I, I tell Benedict about it. So, can you imagine what uh, uh, Sam did? I mean, you know, you know, I mean, it's, 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 this is rubbish. This is un, un, unacceptable. Now, why should Sam do this kind of thing? Okay, they are complaining too much. Uh, means that uh, you 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 are denying everything. I'm talking about now. Let me, let me use my own example now. You are trusting God for a child or for a for a life partner, and then yeah, already, God has already given you a word that whether I be patient, I will do it. But you want to you brought in now, you're talking about just something just happened. Even though you have the knowledge of God, God has told you not to complain about no, anything no, no, at all. I mean, even, even in the one that you are talking about, okay? In the one, God in the one says you give it. Hold on. I have to, okay. the conversation. You have to, I have to be allowed to finish a sentence. <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, God has promised you a child, okay? The child has not arrived. So I go to Benedict. I say, you know, I mean, this is what God does now. Look at me. I have, I have, I have, no longer been waiting for this child. Okay? I'm complaining to a man. Even though the God made the promise. It doesn't, doesn't stop me from complaining. Okay? But there's a difference between that and you going to God and say, God, are you not the one that promised me this child? So why that is it taking fine now? That yes. one is fine. So, so, so what you, you said that complaint is always bad. No, complaint is not bad if it is to God. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me give you an example. I think I opened one scripture here. Psalm 85, verse 15. I have been afflicted and ready to die from my youth. I suffer your terrors. The your is in capital. So he's talking about God. Complaining to God. I am distraught. Your fierce wrath has gone over me. Your terrors have cut me off. They came around me all day long like water. They engulfed me all together. Loved one and friend. You are put far from me. And my acquaintance into darkness. The complaint is to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's complaining to God. Hmm? I have a question. Helping me is a complaint that is addressed to the Almighty. Yes, yeah, me see. No, I have a question. Yes, sir. Somebody, somebody will answer the question. I'm not necessarily the person. Yeah, go on. How did David conclude that it was God that sent those terror? How did what? How did he conclude that it was God that sent those terror to him? Because he was saying that your, your terrors as uh, the death with him. How did he conclude that it was God that sent him? How did he know it was God that sent him? <laughs> A man can receive nothing unless it comes from God. Okay. Okay, so everything that happens to me is from God. Okay, if God doesn't want if, God, if all things are of God. If it's God of, of God, all of God to God to God are all things. If God did not want it to happen to me, it won't happen. So it is God. Okay, if you slap me, it is God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Know that. 
If somebody just wake up from nowhere, just abuses me now. Abuse, yeah, it's abuse, like, it is God, though. It is God. He's it testing you. <laughs> it's God that wow. that's setting that exam to see how you react to it. Huh? Don't take anything from a man. Take everything from God. Be hmm? focused on God. Why are you, you, you bothering with man? Because if you if you think it is man, then you will, you will fight the man. You will abuse the man back. You will say, you know, ah. Do you see that I'm walking here? Are you, are you, are you blind? Are you, you know, are you, are you blind? The, the problem is that they don't, but, they don't but, mind their business. God should tell them to mind their business. That is the issue. You don't mind their we, business. If 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 you if you if okay, it is not you cannot imagine, you cannot make that kind of response. Now. When you say they don't mind their business, who is it that they say that don't mind their business? The people that the, that you say once they say anything, which I said that it was God that that is saying them. They will come to you with life issues and be telling someone with life issues. You know, imagine somebody will be telling you uh, you don't have a child. Why is that you, that you don't want a child? Or someone will tell you that why are you not marry? Is that you don't want to marry? Why are you wasting time? I'm saying it's God that is testing you to see whether <laughs> you know you have the appropriate response. And why are you not married? Me... Because God hasn't given me a wife yet. What's your you problem? When is time they will give, give me a reason why you're supposed to marry at the same time? Uh, don't mind them. Why, why are you buzzing with them? Uh, what was your answer, please? Just out of curiosity, Uncle Benedict, what did you tell? What did you tell them? Oh yeah. Uh, what did I tell them? I don't, I don't want to mind. Uh, he told us now. He told them mind your business. No, you say he <laughs> told them he doesn't want to marry. I don't mind. Is that everything pretty for me? Oh, is that everything pretty for me? I see where they they do a a a few. You say I don't want to want to the lady. I want say you like to talk to me one on one. They want to see me one on one. Am I might say, as I'm not ready, it's not the right time for me. <laughs> I don't know, know why people, it's true. Why, what, what is their business? Ah, hey, my first cousin told want... me that I was a selfish person, they don't have children. You know, yeah, it's yeah, just so selfish. Yeah, what is your own this thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have children, you know, I don't have. So, why should you now be concerned about my selfishness? What is your, you know, what? Go on, they will say you are afraid. You don't want people to eat from you. As if we have to, we want to feed you. How, how is that their, their own palaver now? I don't know. Yeah. Everybody oh, is trying course. to marry up everybody to someone else, etc. They just feel like you are, you, are not, you are not doing it, you are wasting time. What are you doing? But I don't even want to go if to If you don't have a car, they will not, you know. You know when, I was, when I was young, you know, there was a man called Bobby Benson. I don't know whether you know him. Okay. So Bobby Bobby Benson he he brought this he bought this sports car that was really flashy you know let's say Lamborghini was one of these sports cars that was uh, was not Naja we didn't have those kinds of things uh, popular in Naja in those days so <laughs> so the, the singers were saying Bobby bought a car he didn't build a house. <laughs> 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 If you uh, if you buy a car, if you build a house, they say you don't have a car. If you if you, Bobby Ramoto Korali, I mean they they used to. Say, <laughs> I did a record, bro. You can never okay. satisfy. You can never satisfy people, though. Huh? You want to leave? If you, don't, you, don't, if you are not married, they will tell you you are not married. Yeah. If you get married, they tell you you don't have a child. If you have a child, they tell you 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 don't have a male child. If you have a male child, they will tell you ah you only have one. If you have two, they will tell you ah, ah, it's only two that you have it. Just keep it though, for heaven's sake. Thank God for everything. People, people yeah. are just very strange. Ah. I mean, yes, let me see. I was, I wanted to include my favorite complainers in the Bible. Because I, the ones you are reading, they're even kind of polite. But remember when Moses said to God that um, am I the one that gave birth to these people? <laughs> I know. Why are, you, why are you ask why am I why, why you know yeah, very cheeky, you know. very cheeky um Moses Moses can okay. be so cheeky and he got into trouble in the end. Uh, no, but that was when he got into trouble because he answered because he didn't God didn't get angry, but he got angry with those ones complaining. That they didn't no, but, have God, a... but it got angry with Moses in the end because Moses was impatient. See, they, 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 the people were asking for water. Okay? So God says, you know, speak to the rock. 
So Moses struck the rock uh, twice. And then he says, you know, do we have to give you people, do we have to give you people, and God say, when did you start giving them water? <laughs> they sleep on the top. For that reason, he said, you will not enter that land. <laughs> you, will not, you will not get to that promised land. Hmm? Poor Moses. He just, he just, he just opened his mouth to go back. Uh, but the people, the people, you know, I mean, the people set him up now. They, I mean, I would not want to be in Moses' situation. Every this thing, they complain, 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 complain. Mm -hmm. Sestos, good evening. We are having a discussion about, about patience. Good evening, sir. What evening, is the sir. relationship between patience and pride? Or between patience and humility. Ah, right. It's it's it, it look similar because um a man that wants to be patient. Uh, he, he wants to be patient because they, they feel that um they feel that um, uh, for you being patient there is nothing that will come out of you. you know, things are going back to you are just uh, watching and expecting that uh you are waiting for God to do something. So a lot of people will now start saying all sorts of things. Just you'll be you'll be giving all sorts of names. So it is it's always look similar. Because it's sure, sure what, what is what is similar you to don't what? want to what is similar to what? Remain. It's a humiliation and patient. I think I didn't say humiliation. I said humility. Mm -hmm. Two things. I said the relationship between patience and humility, and between patience and pride. Okay, pride, and pride, pride. You don't um, a pride person cannot um, cannot be, be patient because he um, he always want to he always want to be on top. So he, he cannot uh, he cannot wait for anything because he feels that it's within his capacity, even though it's not within his capacity. He just feels that things will happen. So that can that person cannot have patience. Because okay. a, a patient um, a, a patient person um Um, that is it. So patient is not that easy. But pride, uh, we always uh, want things to go our way. So, um, we don't want to to wait for those things to happen at the appropriate time. We want it to happen immediately. So, um, we don't want to wait for God's time. We want to wait for our own time. So there's element of pride of that. As far as you cannot uh, wait, you feel that uh, you can maneuver things and do things by yourself. That, that is the element of pride. Okay. Um, Sam, your hand is up. 
I find this question quite interesting because um, in, in the, in the not-too-distant past, I found myself pondering over this issue. And I came to the conclusion, because I have met a number of such people before, I came to the I came to the 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 conclusion that anybody who can be described as somebody who does not suffer fools must definitely have pride piled up inside themselves. Reason being that in life there will always be people better off than you and people worse off than you in so many different ways, whether socially, academically, you know, physically, in in different, different ways. So there must always be people above and below and at par with you. So when somebody is said to be a person who does not suffer fools, what it means is that this person has categorized certain people into a group of people whose whose level of intelligence or oh, idiots. Um, yes, these people are not, and therefore below your standard. And even though you know we know that there are levels in everything in life, it is not your position to begin. To you know, to to begin to um, should I, for lack of a better expression, rub it in? I mean, so when you begin to when you begin to to show a lack of patience for people whom you consider to be below your level, obviously that is that is serious serious pride. And again, when people are uh, when people are proud. Pride. <laughs> when people are when people when people are proud, you know that they never they 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 will be impatient because they want things to happen the way they want, how and when. You understand? So they, they do not see any reason why they should not get what they want, how they want it, when they want it. And many times do not see why anybody should oppose their position. Thank you. That kind of situation. And so when you meet such people, you just know that this person has a problem with being humble. And I and I know this because I have worked with people like that before. And uh, uh, I can actually tell you one person like that, which um, is it, it's not it's not about trying to. Uh, spoil the person, but if if you know anything about this person, you will understand what I mean. Oye Kanwenu, I used to work with her, and she's one of those people. You know, when you say somebody, somebody who uh, uh, cannot suffer fools, and I worked with her for three years, so I know this kind of personality, and so I recognize it when I see it in other other people who have similar attitudes and i i think that for those kind of people it's a it's a pity because they do not they hardly they hardly have humility in them and you know what is said about uh, pride goes before a fall and all that and all that you know so there, the the relationship between um patience and pride or uh, patience and humility. You'll find that if one does not, any anybody who lacks, uh, uh, anybody who who is proud, will most likely lack uh, uh, patience. A proud person will usually lack patience. It is not. It is not. Um, it is not part of the attributes. Patience is not part of the attributes of pride of a proud person. No. Well, that is know, what I, I, I have come to. I, I, I must confess that uh, 
I'm an impatient person, but God has been helping me. Has been, has been helping. I am a very <laughs> impatient. Um, but God has really been helping me. I mean, it's, it is something that is taking me through now. Yes, yeah, me see. I wanted to say in response to what Samukwa said that, and because I was thinking as he was talking, and it occurs to me that really patience might be a gift. Because in order for you to... Patience might be what? A gift. Okay. A yeah, gift. Right. All right. right. Because in order for you to, to say, I do not suffer fools, I do not easily suffer fools, I don't know how you say it, Suffer fools most, gladly. Yeah, suffer fools gladly. You have never been a fool. <laughs> not, well, I, not, <clears throat> because I have been the fool so many times. And people have had to suffer you. <laughs> not that they even had to suffer me, but I recognized, I knew that I was the fool in this situation. I, even if people did not recognize me, I recognized it. So I hope you know, I, 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 I can empathize with the fool. So I cannot say that I, I will not suffer fools gladly. I will, okay, I will it, suffer We're, all, we're all fools. I mean, you know, David <laughs> says, told God, he says, you know my foolishness. Um, God, God suffers us now. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, some, people, yeah. some people believe, sincerely believe that they are better than other people. And it must be because God has not, Allow them to ever experience foolishness. Maybe I don't know. So maybe they're lucky. Maybe they're not. I don't know. Yeah, but... no, I don't, I don't know. My God, don't align them to 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 experience foolishness. They just don't want to. They just won't, don't want to identify it. Amara, Amara, what do you think? On, Amara is on yes. the phone with Aziba. Okay, don't so worry. When... Yeah, okay. Let me, see, let me pose the question to you. What do you hate waiting for? What do I hate? To to be very, very honest with you, I've hated waiting for the things that God promised me. It's, it's been very, very difficult for me. <laughs> it's been, and it's, and it's been very, you know, and I find that God does not have respect for my time. <laughs> So, so uh, he, do, 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 from your point of view, does God take too long to fulfill his promises? God is not in any hurry with whatever he, it is he wants to do. The other day I was I, I was complaining to him, and he said to me, He said, How many years are we talking about? I said 24 years. He said, You see, that is just like a day, it's not even up to a day. It's not, it's not up to years is like one I'm, day. I'm not impressed. <laughs> That's like a second. <laughs> uh, Samukwa. Uh, uh, I have a question for Yemisi. Now, <clears throat> um, I, I'm, I'm, I want, uh, uh, Yemisi, I would like your opinion on something. When we talk about um, impatient people, you know, I just described those who, uh, these kind of people who claim that they, they, they can't suffer fools gladly. And then this is, in my opinion, this is one kind of impatience. And then there's another, I am thinking, there's another kind of impatience like, you know, um, like having to bear inconvenience, like we were describing. Okay, for example, um, when things happen around you that really get on your nerves, like I was giving an example of my driving experience. Now, um, it is not necessarily that in this kind of case, you are looking at somebody else as if you are better than the person. No. It is that certain events or things happening around you are getting on your nerves. And this is... No, 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 but it, also, it also implies you're better than the people that are getting on your nerves. 
Yeah, he kind of does that sometimes. You, you, you must be, you must be better than them. And your time is more precious than them. They need to get yes. out of the way. <laughs> Uh, See, no, 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 you no. Know, I'm looking you know, at, Sam, let, let, you know, let, you know what you're talking about. When I'm on the road uh, sometimes, I can feel myself, I can feel my blood pressure going up. Then the Holy Spirit will say, Do you think that your car <laughs> is more important than that person walking with his leg? And I'm like, no, 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 sir, it's not. Then you say, You better calm down. So <laughs> I understand what you're saying that there are those people who are so proud and so full of themselves. But I think it's all of it is about control, isn't it? And once you really want to be in control like that, it is pride. That sense of I want things when I I want to I want to get to this time when I want to get there. I want to. Abby, mm, no? well, I don't know. I don't know whether you get my point. I I know I understand what you're saying. I am I am thinking about situations when uh, events around you you know, you know, irritate you, get on your nerves. It is not about the person involved. Though. It is it is more about the situation. And it's not about... Yeah, but the, that but, you but there are people involved in that situation. Yeah, but it's not as if you think your time is more important than the other. Because the truth is this. Everybody, you know, ev everything is important to everybody, depending on what their interests are. You know, yeah, but, so but, 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 everybody... but you think you think yours is more important. That's why you're impatient. And no, no, not compared to other people's own. You are just work. You are you are looking at things within the sphere of what it is you are trying to accomplish within your own world. Granted, you are living in a world that has other people, but there's certain behavior that is considered that is considered acceptable in society. Generally, everywhere, there's certain behavior that is considered acceptable, some behavior considered unacceptable. And when you see some people, you are complying with acceptable behavior. And you see some people, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, exhibiting unacceptable behavior. Yeah, but society, see, you know, society does not, does, is not, society does not define this issue. It is God that defines acceptable behavior. Who is who? Who is the society that is telling you if if one behavior is okay, acceptable? But, okay, but look at okay, look at you from this point. Understand what I'm saying. Driving on, you're I'm driving so, on one I side mean, of the road, what and somebody is that, imagine that some people are just you know they're just certain behaviors that you know like hold on, like, hold on. Let, let him let him finish. He's still going to hit a roadblock. Okay? No, I was trying so to. I was yes. trying to say, imagine a situation where you are driving along the road, yes. and then, okay, maybe there's something happen, uh, there's some, some traffic on the other side, and then some mm -hmm. downfall people now start coming on your own side of the road in the dual yes. carriageway road. Yes, they are better than coming, them. And, no, no, and then they begin to block your way. You are on your yes. own, they are coming on the opposite lane, and they yes. block you. They start blocking your way. Now, yes, in that kind of in that in that kind of scenario, they've caused chaos. And it's difficult for everybody to yes, but you to, are, to, any to, to, to start with, you are better than them because you didn't do that from your own point of view. You are better than them. No, because but not... you... uh, no, now, no, now, because the, first of all, the problem is not even on, the traffic is not on my side now, so I don't even need to go to somebody <laughs> I, else's lane. And even I, if it, it was, was on I my know, side, but you didn't, you didn't break the law, so you are better than them. There is something wrong with them. Okay, but that is not a godly perspective. It's about it they isn't. are looking for a shortcut. <laughs> uh, okay, huh? okay, see, Dr. Femi, is there yeah. uh, is there any shortcut to heaven? Let's be honest. <laughs> is there a shortcut to heaven? Can they try it on their way to they are no, trying no, to get no, to no, heaven no. and then so they are looking for shortcut? It doesn't it can't okay. work. So, 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 let, so, let, so, so let me explain. Let me explain. <laughs> let me explain what I mean to you. Okay. Right in that situation, right, from your point of view, you are better than those people who are not taking that shortcut. But Sam, the reason why you are not taking that shortcut is because you are not a downfall driver. Yeah. Okay. If 
Even more you than know, that. Because, you know, because, because God, God, you're God, able to God, rationalize. God has given you, God has given God you has a given you the capacity. Yeah, you, know, you know, I mean, and, 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 you know, so, you know, okay, because look, I, I, I have come to understand that there is no crime that I cannot commit. Yeah. It's just the grace of God. It places yeah. you inside it, you know, I mean, some people, some people are on a desert island, there are three of them, and they decide to kill somebody so that they can eat the person. <laughs> and you can <laughs> you can think it is, no, this is rubbish, how can they do that, etc. Because you are not in that situation. Because you, 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 God did not give you the grace. You say, you know, this government is a thief, he's stealing so much money, etc., you know. But you haven't seen money, koro koro, to know whether yeah, you two yeah. will think and think and say, look, oh, uh, okay, so everything is by the grace of God. All right. So even though they are blocking it, uh, God still requires us to just relax. Okay. Say they are going somewhere. He is taking you there. Uh, he's taking you there. How do you know that the reason why they are blocking the road is not because God does not want you to get early somewhere because an accident is going to occur at this particular time in this particular place, and God wants to impede you from getting there. How do you know that you are not on the way to the World Trade Center and the downfall people who are blocking your road uh, so that the, the World Trade Center can collapse before you get there? There are all kinds of different variables. And always requires us to succumb to the grace of God. Can I, uh, can I say no, something? Yes, please. Uh, you know my my by first prayer partner? <laughs> the, Who is your by first I, prayer partner? Manuel Lukofu, that I said. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, he, so he, um, we, were, we were praying about something and I, and I Post something to him. I said, This is something I'm praying about. Join me. And he came back as usual with an insight that I did not, that I agreed with, but I did not like. And it had to do with somebody who I had made a decision about. So that person is an occultic person, is going, is doing certain things. And I had decided that my way of dealing with them would be to block them completely. And he said to me, um, God said, you should go and make peace with the person. <clears throat> and, <laughs> and you should forgive the person. And I was like, I'm sorry. Of course, I, I knew that, that he, because uh, some other people had said it before. But I had all kinds of, so I started to have an argument in my head with God. I said, why do I have to do this? I don't want to do this. And God said, you have to do it. You have to make peace. I said, why? Why do I have to make peace with this person? He, then he said, look, let me see. If you grew up where this person grew up, mm -hmm. in the circumstances that this person grew up in, mm -hmm. you would also be going to those places to do this. Precisely. This is their upbringing. This is how they were brought up. This was what they were taught. This was what their mother did, their father did. This is something that this person is struggling with. And you are part of a new covenant. You have a responsibility to show my personality in this situation. I'm still struggling with this. It's not like I have. MC has said, yes, so God, I be, mm -mm. we're still on the matter. We're still fighting. No, on the matter. That's and why we're talking now. So, but I'm not in a situation now where I, I realized that, and this thing, Mr. Okwa, is, is like I can feel it in my veins because I know God is telling me the truth. That if I was brought up the way this person was brought up, I would do exactly the same thing. So my, my stance where I am today is privilege. It is not I'm better than that person. It is that God put me where I am and he gave me 
people and surrounded me with people who were praying for me. Then he gave me wisdom. Then he gave me understanding. Then he... Otherwise, another thing for the talk. Oh. Very true. I, I think I can, I, it resonates. I can understand that. You remember our discussion of, 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 of Monday about my book, which Latana rejected. And uh are you people and I said, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not giving them my book. I'm not giving them my book again. And people said no, I should go and put the book. I said, no, I'm not, there's no way. I'm not I can't they reject my book. So after the after the discussion, then I said, I told myself, I said, I don't want them to just think that I didn't come back. I want them to know the reason. So I need to phone them to say, you people, you think you can stop the gospel or something, you know. So I had a point person there, Victoria. I phoned and phoned and phoned that she didn't answer. Okay. But later on, God said, go and give them the books. You understand? So, I mean, uh, uh, um, <laughs> God's, God's way, I don't know. Sometimes his ways are not our ways. We have to just, just, just succumb. And, and, you know, John 7, 17 is a powerful scripture. Jesus says, if you do, you will know. If you do what he says you should do, uh, then you will know the wisdom behind what he says you should do. But initially, it doesn't make sense. Because somebody has offended you, and, you know, and he said you have to be patient with the person, and he will go and see the person. And when you go and see the person, the person has eh. So you come to your senses a bit. So you now know that you, you are in the wrong. And you are thinking, look at this person. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't God that told me to come and talk to you. Uh, so, you know, uh, and you have to keep your mouth shut because of that person. You know, um, uh, Just wait. Uh, Ozioma, are you are you available or are you are you at work? You're just listening. If you don't answer, then I will know that you are not available. Okay, Mr. Dotun, can you remember waiting patiently for God to fulfill a promise which was then finally fulfilled? Can Dotun hear me? Doesn't seem to be around. Festus, can you recall waiting patiently for something? Mm, yes. What happened? Okay, so um, I recall that, um, maybe in the last uh, six or seven years, um, every year I Every year, I, I will write this same thing down. God, I'll come again. This. <laughs> I want you to answer. <laughs> you know, every year, but you know, the way God works, uh, works. Yes, I've been patient, but I, I just, I was just hopeful that as far as year and in, I will have all my lists. If there are 10, he will answer all the 10 and then he will leave that one. I will look at it at the end of the year and say, ah, this one again has crossed over. I've been crossing it over to and this year got answered. In short, you have to. That was the first thing he answered first. Okay, then so, can, can you remember when you were frustrated that your own plans didn't come to pass? Yes. What happened? I can also remember when. <laughs> yeah, and and, and that's, that's why I say most of the time we want to to find a way. Um, there is a time that I was 
for also for believing God for I was when I want to go into I want to go for uh, go to higher school. So I I decided to to farm and before then there was so much confirmation that if I did if I if I if I farm this rice um I'm going to get I'm going to harvest so much. So I have that convinced I convinced sure that I'm hundred percent sure because like, yeah, plan for God it. is one that yes. So and then I after everything it was you know bed of the egg from the eat <laughs> it's it, 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 it everything. And, <laughs> you know, you have that. to put something in the farm. <laughs> That they will know that ah there is a man here. I will even put things that surely will be making noise. It's a lie. They eat everything, and at the end, I didn't get everything. I was so unjust. I was very very angry with my stepmom. It was one that said, "God, I found this price that ah, I will use this one to go to school and do other things for myself." I was I was I was confused, you know that ah. If it is God, and what makes me know that it's God? In how I take to get everything, now I have to farm everything. Uh, people just give me, I say, ah, this is God. It's God is really, really a bit. But at the end, I didn't get anything. There was nothing to write on. It's really funny. Abigail, why, why is patience so difficult? Why do we find it so difficult to be patient? Sorry, it took me some time. I was fiddling with my phone. Um, why do we find it so? I I think. Well, for, for for me, uh, you know, yeah, I've grown up in an impatient world. I've grown Fast up food. in an impatient <laughs> <laughs> very, 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 world. world. Very, very impatient world. And somehow uh, that has you know, um, set in with one's character. You just want things to be done. Not now, now I will. I will want it now. I want it now. Because with all that, I, I tend to feel like, you know, there is no time. And if I don't get it now, my blood starts boiling. I don't know. I, I, for me, I just think it's an environmental fact. That's the world we've grown up in, what we're, we're used to, what we're used to seeing our, our, our parents do and things like that. I don't know which better way to put it. Why does a man lose hope? I, I, I think you know, many times we compare ourselves with others. Oh, this person, uh, has been driving a car for 10 years as I'm here. We compare ourselves with each other, but each person's time is different. Comparing, I call it comparing, comparisonitis. <laughs> yes, this is always happening. Always have right. some itis in there. Yes. The God has said he will prosper. Look at Bill Gates. So what's it be like, Bill Gates? If God is my father, why well, am I not like Bill Gates? Why am I still trekking all over the place? Why am I still wearing the same old clothes? What? Compari comparisonitis, that's it. <laughs> Bulus. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, George. We're, we're talking about patience. Do you like God's timing? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you uh, laughing? Doctor, you ask, you know, the way you ask as if I have an option. 
you have an option now. I mean, you, you know, you don't have to like it. You have an option. Though. You don't have to like uh, it. You <laughs> might, you might, you might, you might have to do it, but you don't have to like it. I mean, there are so many things about uh, that the way the God does things. Like, you mean you like God's timing? Huh? I'm asking you. Do you like God's timing? I've come to tell myself I must like it, so I don't have an option. <laughs> you must like it. <laughs> Because God, I mean, you know, they, 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 we had an example of Sabuka, which which was which blew my mind. You know, one day God did something. Uh, do you find that God takes too long? Yeah, sometimes I feel like that. Do you like things uh, that take like... too long? Do you like things that take too long? I'm questioning you like a lawyer now. I'm trying to trap you in your own mess. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like things that take too long? A lot of the time, no. Yeah, so you don't like God's timing? <laughs> yeah, so what I said was, I have come <laughs> to tell myself that I don't have an option. So whether I like it or not, as far as I'm concerned, it's immaterial. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't count. I have to. So I have to learn to like it. So tell us, Barnabas. What is the relationship between faith and patience? So I think um, patience is our way of displaying the faith that we have, if I can put it that way. So we need patience to be able to to... So our patience tells the person looking at us to the how would I put that? Okay, so it's like an right, interpretation you're dealing with two of... things. Don't don't forget that the other thing, you know, faith and patience. Are they Siamese twins? Are they cousins? Are they relatives? What's the relationship? So the, the relationship you have one without is, the other? I don't think so, sir. I don't think so. That's what I'm trying to, I'm struggling to explain. So the relationship for me is, I don't think one can be patient if the person does not have faith in whatever he is patient after. And then the patience now... Is, is it not the opposite? It's one... Is it not the opposite uh, of what you just of, said? I think it's, it might be the opposite of what you just said. He said, one cannot have patience if he doesn't have faith. Is it not that one cannot have faith if he doesn't have patience? Well, I, I, I think it's both ways. Uh, I might be wrong, but I think it's both ways. I think Yes, you can be patient. Right. You can be patient and not have any faith. Yeah, true. Yeah, you can be a patient Muslim. You can be a patient atheist. But you cannot have faith in God and not have patience. I agree, sir. Because your faith is also expressed through your patience. Yes, that, 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 I think that, that was what I was struggling to, to say earlier, right? But I think I was trying to explain it in the opposite form. But let me let me wait you a little bit because you just you just you just came. So the scripture says that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. What exactly does it mean? 
What strength are they renewing? <laughs> what is their strength? Okay. So I will say it, their patience because um, there's a lot of there's a lot of strength in that uh, in that fruit of the spirit, that patience itself. So I think it takes a, a it takes a strong person to be able to have patience, right? So that patience tends to tend to fizzle off over time. So if we wait, it takes a Lord, strong person to have patience. I'm not sure I understand me. Strength, a strong person in what sense? In Mike Tyson. Okay, so so no, <laughs> it takes somebody who has some level of strength in the Holy Spirit or in God, right, to be able to be patient. Being patient is not easy. That's what I'm trying to say. In a nutshell, being 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 patient can be very tough, right? So and over time, it tends to it tends to fizzle off. So I think that scripture is talking about if we if we wait on the Lord faithfully, he will renew that patience in us. Because Okay, I so it is actually the strength is patience according to you. Yeah, that's what that's the way me I see. I think it's the patient. Okay, I'll, I'll think about that. Not. Okay, I'll think about that. I'll, I'll, I asked the question really if, in ignorance because I, I, I actually don't know the answer. I'm, I'm hoping somebody would educate me. Um, Mr. Adelike, you, you went the AWOL, we were looking for you. What we are now, you are raising your hand. What happened? We are well, calling I don't you, know. Calling I I didn't know. I didn't know. Well, well I you, you didn't know. That... Were you with us or were you not with us? Where were you? I was here. I was here. I, I didn't. I didn't, know. You didn't, I didn't know how. You didn't, you didn't hear. I didn't know why I didn't hear. I, I, well, there was a question that came to my mind. I I, I don't know whether I, yeah, I think it's in line also. It's like when you said we're looking at patient, and when somebody asks God for something, you are praying about for something about something. And you are waiting and waiting and waiting, and you go to a stage that you think that the prayer is not going to be answered. And the only reason why you think that the prayer is not going to be answered is because you feel, you feel that the prayer does not fall uh, in line with the will of God, you know. But but when we look at it critically, is it is it because we we are not patient enough, or is it? That is, is not the prayer we are, what we are asking for. It's not it, it's not uh, falling in line with the will of God. I'm not sure I understand the question, but I, you know maybe somebody can answer. Um, uh, Sam, can you help him? Do you understand the question he's asking? Uh, uh, I'm not too sure. I do, however, um, if it's in relation to the the scripture you said about. Um, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Mm. Uh, if, if it's in relation to that, I I want to agree with Bege that I believe that strength. Oh, no, uh, Barnabas. Oh, sorry, Barnabas. I want to believe that, that, uh, that the patience is the strength because when you are waiting on the Lord, uh, the truth of the matter is that because his timing and your own are not the same, there's the possibility for one to get exasperated and mm. start getting weary. Yeah, but, exactly. you know, when you are waiting on the Lord, it doesn't just mean waiting for him. Waiting on the Lord is, is, a, is a, a little step beyond waiting for the Lord. Because waiting on the Lord means that you are believing in him, you are communicating with him, you are you are you are in touch with him and you are in and you are spending some time with him from time to time not that you just give him an assignment then you go off and go and sleep and then and then you are waiting for him like a driver you send 
to go and buy food for you and are waiting for him to come back. No. So if if he does not, if he does not, you know, renew you, you will get exasperated. That patience will wear out. So it is the patience that he helps to renew uh, and and avoid exasperation when you are uh, we are waiting, we are waiting on him, you know. So that's why I said I I tend to agree with what uh, Barnabas okay. uh, was saying. You know, uh, um, uh, I don't know if you can, can you repeat that. can you repeat your question so that we don't um, okay because he he was Sam just touched on what Barnabas but, saying but we, we are ignoring your question. What was the question again? Well, I think I think Sam Sam uh, actually answered it. He, the aspect oh, okay. that uh, the aspect that I I, I the emphasis was when we are waiting, you know, when we are waiting and maybe we wait to a certain extent, a, a, a certain period, and we feel that God is not going to have answered or it is not the will of God, you know, but he has really explained the strength there, you know, in that waiting. Yes, you just said we should not give up. Yes, exactly. Don't, don't think. So, you know, pray with importunity. Just continue. Pray without ceasing, without stopping. Yes, let me see. I also wanted to suggest that the weariness will come in the sense that you will you will get to the end of your strength. So let me use myself. One day I wake up and I will say, this thing is not going to happen. I've waited 10 <laughs> years. It's not, it's not going to happen. And I got then God I, to send angels to strengthen you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, that night I will sleep and he will renew the vision. He will bring a detail. And that detail... To, to tell you, I've not forgotten. No. Yes, he will put it near the window here. So when I sit, I'll say, ah, come on. It's like this thing is going to... So that will give me, it will give me bread for maybe another six months, maybe another one year, two years. i say, ah, ah God, now... Okay, He's I don't want that. Oh I'm not going to go again. I'm tired. Yeah. Mm. yeah, then he will he will do something else. So that renewal is is strength, is patience, is vision, is he will give you bread for the journey. Then you you will like like an eagle that has eaten, you will go up in the air again. But of course you cannot stay up. <laughs> you will come down, then he will give you um, I think. So you see, you know, there's a scripture that says, "He who believes does not make haste." What does it mean? I don't know what it means <laughs> because, um, for me, in the beginning of my belief for certain things, I wanted it to happen now. So I don't know if that means that I, I didn't believe. I think. Maybe what God is saying is that the real genuine belief that he's interested in is the kind that waits 100 years, 200 years, 300 years, and does not, at the does end, give up. It's, better. it's better than the beginning. It's better than when it, you first believe because, and really, if you think about it, it's better because it has hit all kinds of things. It's And for me, I'm fascinated by that testimony that this guy knew that his body was not able to produce a child, but he still believed. And I don't even believe it because that's not what I'm reading. Because it looks to me like he went and made other you know, plans. But the God that sees his heart says that he believed even when he had overgrown the ability to have kids. His wife had outgrown the ability to have kids. And he just, so of course that faith at the end was better than, oh, somebody just came and told you, I'll give you a child and you have all the cap. You are, you're young, you're fresh. You're, yeah, of course, it's easy to believe. So the, the belief that God is interested in is that one that you have carried with, and people around you said, this thing is not going to happen. Your body says it won't happen. There's every, and that for me also talks about your books because you've, you've carried these books for a long time. And then you hit somebody who, undermines that thing and of course you're going to be upset by it but that's not what god told you so whatever it is god told you is going to happen okay but let, let me let me say this 
uh, the, the scripture says that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The fact is that if we wait on God, there's just so much that we are going to get. And it might, you know, if, and it, you know, let us say we're waiting because of a particular promise. Okay. That promise itself, God did not fulfill it for 20 years, just as you know. But in those 20 years of waiting, there's so much that we are going to get because we are with God. There's so much that we are going to get because. There is a fullness that is in him. And you cannot be with him, be focused on him, without just be receiving all kinds of things that, you know, that might even be much more than the one that you are waiting for in the end. And that is where the strength is coming. The strength in the knowledge of God. The strength to, to you know, the strength, there is a strength that comes from knowing that God is God. Knowing that God is for you. Knowing that God is on your side. Knowing, I mean, so many things, there's so much that we can receive from God that we will get from just waiting for him patiently <laughs> is the word. You see, pray for us. Let us close this meeting. I know you don't like you don't like public praying. That's why I always call it you. No, I don't actually. <laughs> yeah. In, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father Lord, we thank you for this discussion today. You pinpointed it. You said that you are interested in our faith. And it is one of those things that you emphasized. So we know that this discussion was engineered by you and it is important to you. And we know that whenever we are speaking about you, you are listening and you are interested in our conversations about you. So we delight in speaking about you. We delight in discussing you and finding out what it is that is on your heart. And if we have pleased you, we are delighted because this is the goal. So, Father, Lord, we commit everything that we have said here today and we ask that you will renew our understanding, our wisdom, our knowledge of you, to know you better because it is impossible to know you completely, but we want to know more. Therefore, Father, visit us individually and give us more for these meetings. Let us bring you here and let us meet and improve on our knowledge and our understanding of you. Lord, as everyone goes today, go with us. Be with us, Lord. Let your presence continue to be with us because you are the real gold and you are the real pearl and you are really what it is that is worth anything at all. So at the end of the day, you are everything that we want and there is nothing beyond you that is desirable. Therefore, Father, Lord, we renew our commitment to you today. And we thank you. We thank you for honoring us with your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. So, yeah, we see, expect, expect uh, that, that, that baby. That baby Jesus. <laughs> that <is coming. laughs> That baby Jesus say to the righteous, "You are the apple of God's the eye, Benedict and Ligbe." We are all the apple of God's eye. God bless everybody. God bless, God bless you too. God bless you all. God bless you, Benedict.